I've always wanted to make money with stonks, but every time I listen to advice from guys on TV like Jim Cramer, I lose a ton of money. Like a few months ago, he told me to buy this technology stock called Peloton, but failed to mention it's just an exercise bike with an iPad strapped to it. Lost 80% on that trade. Then last week, he tipped me off to a stock called Netflix. That one's not going too well either. And it's gone. Now I've got a second mortgage on my horse, but thankfully I've learned the perfect investment strategy. Listen to Jim, then do the exact opposite of what he says. So in this video, we're going to build an algo trading app with JavaScript that can make real trades in the stock market based on an ironclad AI-powered algorithm. Quick disclaimer, this video does contain investment advice, as long as your strategy is to be poor. All I ask in return is that you hit the like button and subscribe. The inverse Kramer strategy is not unique, but the problem is that I don't think there's a public API that provides Jim Kramer picks. I had to sell my TV so I can't watch a show anymore, which means we need to go with plan B. We'll use the world's premier AI model, GPT-3, and ask it if Jim Kramer would buy or sell whatever stocks we're interested in. GPT-3 writes pretty much all my code these days with GitHub Copilot, so it should really have no problem figuring out stock picks. Let's first take a look at the architecture and tech stack of this application. First we'll need a backend server, and for that I'm using Firebase Cloud Functions. I was going to use Cloudflare because I felt bad about how far their stock has fallen after it was recommended by Jim Cramer, but I think Firebase is the best fit for this project. We'll have a function running on a cron job during market hours that when invoked will make a call to the GPT-3 API. Generative Pre-trained Transformer 3 is one of the most sophisticated and terrifying algorithms out there. We can take a list of stocks and simply ask it if Jim Cramer would buy them or not, and it will respond with a simple yes or no. And we could even provide it more context, like Kramer's recent tweets and articles, to nudge it in the right direction. If the answer is sell, then we'll buy. If the answer is buy, then we'll short sell. Now to trade a stock, we'll need a broker. And for that, I'm using the Alpaca API, which is basically Robinhood for developers. Also, I'm deeply saddened and dismayed to report that the Robinhood guys are no longer billionaires. Their stock also tanked big time after being recommended by Jim Kramer. Alpaca is really cool because it's commission-free trading, and it also provides real-time market data that you can use for free. And if you don't want to lose your own money, it supports paper trading in a fake simulated environment. For this tutorial, I'm using a thousand dollars of my own money. But once we get capitalized with a few hundred million, I'm going to open it up to retard, I mean retail investors. Or if you want to do it yourself, all the source code is on GitHub. In all seriousness, there's a lot to learn from this project. You'll learn how to run background jobs in the cloud on a timer, how to trade stocks and crypto with JavaScript, how to interact with the GPT-3 algorithm with JavaScript, and we'll even build a web scraper to extract dynamic content from sites like Twitter using Puppeteer. Here, and we'll do it all in under 100 lines of code. To get started, open up the terminal and use Firebase tools to initialize a new Firebase functions project. You'll need a Firebase account to do this, although this code will work on any Node.js server. Now let's cd into the functions directory and install our dependencies for OpenAI, Alpaca, and Puppeteer. Now at this point, you'll need an API key from OpenAI to use GPT-3. It's a paid service, but I believe they offer you an $18 credit to play around, and then pricing is pay-as-you-go after that. You'll first want to go to the playground and try it out. It will likely rule over humans in the not-so-distant future, so be nice to it. You can ask it questions like, is Jim Cramer good at stonks? It's going to simp for him, but it should at least be able to tell us whether or not he would buy a certain stock. Now from there, we'll need to get our API key. It's a secret value, so make sure not to expose it publicly. Now in our Firebase code, we can open up the index.js file and import the SDK there. The first thing we'll need to do is authenticate using the organization and API key from OpenAI. I have my key set up as environment variables in Firebase, however, you could just paste them in directly if you want. Again, just make sure they don't end up in a public Git repo. From there, we can instantiate OpenAI with the configuration. To start things off, I'm going to write all the code in an HTTP function that will allow us to test it in the browser. To make a call to OpenAI, we can use the git completion method. There are many other things it can do, like answer questions, classify text, and things like that, but I found the completion method to be most useful for this project. And keep in mind, this is a really dumb way to pick stocks. GPT-3 is really cool, but it's not going to magically pick good stocks for you. The most important option is the prompt. The AI will try to complete whatever comes next, and then you have a variety of other options you might pass here to tweak the results. OpenAI will respond with an object with the result, so let's go ahead and send that back as the response from the function. Now open up the terminal and run npm run serve to run the functions locally. That'll give you a link to the browser with the function URL. You should get a response with the data from GPT-3. Most importantly, it has the stocks that it thinks Jim Cramer will sell. That's pretty cool, but it would help if we could give GPT-3 the proper context, like Jim Cramer's recent tweets. For that, we're going to need to build a web scraper with a tool called Puppeteer, which is basically a headless browser that you can run on the server. I'm not sure 
sure how legal this is, and this is only legal advice if you want to go to prison. We'll first import Puppeteer, then create an async function called scrape. What we'll do is launch a Chromium browser on the server, and then we'll tell it to go to Jim Cramer's Twitter page. The tweets aren't server rendered, so we're going to tell it to wait until the network is idle, and then have it wait for an additional three seconds after that as well. At that point, the tweet should be loaded, and we can even take a screenshot of the page just to verify. Now from there, we can use page evaluate to interact with the actual content on the web page. Inside this function, we'll have access to the document where we can grab different elements in the DOM. In this case, we'll just grab the entire body text and let GPT-3 deal with that. You could improve this by writing code that only grabs tweets that talk about actual ticker symbols. Now from there we can close the browser and return the tweets. Let's go back into our HTTP function, then we'll call the scrape function we just defined, and interpolate that into the prompt that we pass to OpenAI. In theory, GPT-3 will try to complete Jim Cramer's next tweet for him, and now we're ready to trade stocks. First, you'll need to sign up for an Alpaca account and deposit some money into it, or you might use the paper trading feature. It's popular with algo traders, where stock trading is entirely automated with code. And then you'll see the option to generate an API key. And remember, this is also a secret value, and you really don't want to expose it because then someone could trade on your account. Now if we go back to our JavaScript code, we can import the Alpaca SDK and add our API keys to it. You can also set the paper option to true if you want to use fake money. After we get the OpenAI response, I'm going to create a variable called stocks to buy that uses a little bit of regex to grab the ticker symbols from whatever GPT returns us. And now we can do all kinds of stuff with Alpaca. The first thing we might want to do is get our account which has important information like our current buying power. After that, buying a stock is as easy as creating an order. It'll be looking for a ticker symbol, that's the stock that you want to buy or sell, then you can specify a quantity, or it also supports fractional shares if you want to buy a specific dollar amount. And that's what we'll do here. We'll take our current buying power and use 90% of it to buy a stock. If you want to be extra poor, Alpaca also supports trading on the margin, where you can leverage your buying power further. In this example, we'll buy the stock, and then we'll make it a market order. That tells it to buy the stock at the current available price, and the trade will only be valid for the current day. Let's go ahead and send the order object as the response. Now go to the browser and refresh the page. When you do that, it's going to make an actual trade in the stock market. You should get a confirmation number back, and also see the trade in your Alpaca account. Congratulations! you are now an algo trader. Now the final thing I want to show you is how we can run this code every day with a cron job. A cron job is just a schedule for doing work in the background on the server. We can easily set one up with Firebase using a pub sub function. This function I'm going to give a memory allocation of 4 gigabytes because Puppeteer uses a lot of memory. Then we'll set up a schedule that runs at 10 a.m. every day Monday through Friday. And then it's really important to set the time zone for the markets that you want to trade in. Now from there we can simply copy the code we just wrote and paste it in here directly. As one extra touch, I'm also going to cancel all orders and close out all my positions whenever this function runs. That means every day I'll sell all my stocks and then buy a new one based on Jim's recommendations. Now if you're ready to become poor, run Firebase Deploy to push your code to the cloud. Now if you want to track my fund's performance, follow me on Twitter because I plan on posting regular updates there. To wrap things up, I want to apologize to Jim Cramer. I have nothing against the guy, and the reality is that nobody, except for maybe Nancy Pelosi's husband, can predict the stock market. Cramer himself said, We are all wrong so often that it amazes me that we can have any conviction at all over the direction of things to come, but we must. Again, this is only investment advice if you want to be poor. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.